welcome to August 5th, the 6th work day of the week, preparation for the Lord's Sabbath, which is the 7th day of the week, tomorrow, so you're supposed to prepare yourself today for that. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, a year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 206 of the year 2011. Today's story, In or Out, In or Out. Brethren, I suggest you take a pen and paper and write down the chapter and verses that we give you so you can go back and read the whole context at your own leisure. Not just the verses that we give you, but the before and after. As I say, use the 5W system to figure out what it's talking about, the who, what, where, when, and why. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into... Oh, by the way, you can use the pause button down in the corner down here to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you can open up your own Bible and read chapter and verse right along with us. Well, with that, brethren, let's get right on over into in or out. And to do that, we're going to go to Luke chapter 9. And verse 62. Also Revelation chapter 3 verses 15 through 22. We'll start reading in Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not for the kingdom of God. I'll break in here and give my uh, give you my own thought on this. Anyone who starts working for the Lord, trying to produce figs on a fig tree, trying to produce new people, and then looks back and sees how nice the Christmas, the Easter's and etc. were, is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now back in the study. Jesus has little patience for hypocrites. Hypocrites is one who is trying to play church, play church, not do his job. As you read through the scriptures, you get a distinct message that he, Christ, has more respect for those who reject him and live in sin than those who say they accept him but live according to their own desires. He would rather we be in or out, not in between. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30 we read, Anyone who isn't helping me opposes me, Jesus said to a religious leader of his day. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Last fall, our neighbor and his family went on a bus tour of Germany and Austria. There were a number of people on the tour bus, and they depended on each other to keep up with the group. One morning, their tour guide gave them all instructions about when and where to meet the next morning. My friend and his wife somehow misunderstood where the group was supposed to meet and they were waiting in the back of the lobby. They finally realized that they were in the wrong place and ran to the bus to see everyone else sitting in their seats waiting on us. They began to apologize to the rest of the group, but it was obvious they were not happy. My friend did not blame them. They were ready go to go, and my friend and his wife were holding them back from their agenda. That is what it is like when you have people in the faith who do not share the group's enthusiasm for Christ's mission. Their apathy holds back the rest and slows down the trip for everyone. 
It would be better to simply get off the bus and than to constantly keep the driver waiting. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and now looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God, said Jesus. Jesus is saying this to us. Do not pretend to follow me while keeping your eyes on the world. There's people out here that says, Jesus, holy Jesus, but will not follow him one step. They change Christ's Sabbath to another day. Some say it can be any day of the week. Some would rather have Christmas than Christ's Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus wants us to be honest about our de uh, dedication to him. Either we are committed or we are not. Either we are in or we are out. Either we love him or we do not. Get on the bus or get off. Sitting on the fence is not an option in God's economy. How are you trying to live in the two worlds at the same time? What would Jesus have to say about the way you are living? They that overcome. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21 reads, To him that is overcoming will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and I am set down with my Father in his throne. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, being a hypocrite makes void the word of God. If you're just playing church, you go sit in a pew, but then go out after that hour and do your own thing. That's making void the word of God. That Sabbath is a day of rest. Not Sunday. The first day of the week is called a work day throughout the Bible. There is one Sunday that God, one first day of the week that God has set aside for you. And if you look and study it up, you'll find that's Pentecost. I won't go through how it is figured out. I haven't got the time here today to do it. But believe me, brother, you can figure it out. Follow God's commands. Use his high and holy days. Not the tradition of men. Not where he has set aside Christmas, Easter, Halloween, etc. God doesn't ever say to do that. But man does. If you want to follow Christ for eternal salvation, get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. Ask the Lord, change me. Have me follow you. Explain to me the letter you sent to me that's in the book that you gave me and that's your own Bible. And while you're on your knees asking forgiveness, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that you find in that Word of God. Well, brethren, with that we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.